How is it going everybody Mr Android here welcome back to a brand new video on this channel today i've got two of my favorite android phones i have the samsung galaxy s25 which is currently running the one ui 8 and i also got the google pixel 9 pro that has the android 16 material 3 expressive these are not only beautiful looking phones but they also provide one of the best android experiences you can get right now With that said, in this video, I'll be comparing the Google's latest Android 16 with one of the most popular Android skins, the One UI 8. Guys, it's gonna be a super interesting video, so stay tuned and watch it until the very end. Also, let's aim for at least 1,000 likes on this one. With that said, drop a like, leave a comment, and let's get started. All right, guys, starting things with the lock screen. When I long press and go to the customization page on Android 16. We get this slightly redesigned interface with some nice animations all around. But one disappointment I have from Google is they didn't add any new clock face with Android 16. Well, these are all some old designs that used to look good back in the days of Android 14. But now I think Google should definitely consider adding some new modern looking clock faces that will help you to customize the lock screen in a much better way. I don't think these look as good as we see on other Android phones. Apart from the clock styles. We do get the option to change and customize the color and we can also use the slider to increase or decrease the saturation as well. But when you go to the size tab, here you can choose between the large and small size instead of giving us the option to freely move and adjust the size as per the requirement. So despite having many options, there are certain restrictions which kind of annoy me about the Pixel UI. Next, let's talk about some new features they have added with Android 16. If you tap on more wallpapers, here you can select and apply any wallpaper from your gallery. There is this new effects option and when you select that, here you can add different shapes and effects to the wallpaper. Guys, you're going to love all these beautiful animations they have added to Android 16. Now not only you can add different shapes, but you can also change the background color depending on the wallpaper itself. Then we have also got the weather section where you can apply different effects to your wallpaper. We have rain, snow, fog and sun. Now when you unlock your phone, you'll have that live wallpaper effect for a while. Similarly, when you apply any shape to the wallpaper, the transition from your lock screen to your home screen looks really really cool. So these are some of the new features Google has added to the lock screen. Now coming to the Samsung's One UI, we already have the option to resize the clock, but now we can freely move it anywhere you want on the lock screen. You can simply drag and place the clock wherever you want to without any restrictions. And you know what the best part is? There are plenty of beautiful looking clock styles you can choose and these actually look good on your lock screen. Guys, you also get some nice animated clock styles as well. Now just keep in mind that I'm only trying to compare the default options and settings here without including the good lock application. Because once we have good lock on any Samsung devices, then I don't think there is any competition at all. With One UI 8, they have also added this new dynamic clock for the lock screen and this basically uses AI to detect the border of a subject and expands accordingly to perfectly adapt the shape depending on your current wallpaper. I think they have done a great job with the dynamic clock and it definitely looks way better and a lot cooler compared to the depth effect we see on iOS and many other Android skins. Now coming back to the lock screen features, We also have this all new suggestion option that provides you with beautiful lock screen suggestions with the help of AI. This might be useful when you don't have enough time to customize your lock screen. Then you can surely use this feature. I also like how they implemented the now bar feature in the lock screen, which basically lets you easily access all your live activities with just one hand. It shows the music playing on your phone, timers, voice recordings, live cricket or football scores, and all other activities directly on your lock screen. I like how it allow users to quickly interact with ongoing tasks and information without needing to unlock your phone. Now moving on to the home screens, despite the fact we do get slightly modern looking icons on the One UI 8, I'm still totally fine with how the icons look on the Pixel UI. I know they are kind of outdated now, but it doesn't look bad at all. And when it comes to themed icons, I think Pixel has done a way better job compared to Samsung's One UI. Now one area where the One UI outperforms Pixel is in the terms of design and functionality of the widgets. Not only do they look really good, but they also come in different sizes and shapes including 1 by 2. You can resize the widgets as per the requirement and the widgets themselves matches perfectly with the overall aesthetics of One UI design language. 
Guys, another thing which I didn't like about the Android 16 is we still do not get the option to remove the search bar as well as the at a glance widget. These two cannot be removed from your home screen no matter what you do. So there are certain restrictions across the Pixel UI that kind of annoys me quite often. Talking about the app drawer, as you can see now we have got this blur in the background on Android 16 which was missing for a long time and this same blur applies when you open the quick settings panel and even in the recent page you get the background blur that looks so much better compared to the solid light or dark background which we used to get in older versions. Now coming to One UI, Samsung now allows you to choose between the horizontal and vertical scrolling. You just need to tap on the three dot button and then change the order from custom to alphabetical. This is what I really like about One UI. I mean you get options for each and every element throughout the interface. Next, if I open the quick panel on both phones, I like the fact that both Samsung and Google have a different approach and they're not trying to copy iOS like other Chinese skins. Both the control center allows you to tweak and customize as per the need. All you have to do is just tap on the edit icon. Here you can change the entire layout and drag and move the sliders anywhere you want. Now coming to pixel UI, first you get this all new brightness slider which you may or may not like and you also get the same squarish slider even when you open the volume panel too. Not only that, when you tap on any toggle, you get this nice little jiggle effect which changes the shape from rounded to square. So when the toggle is off, it will have a more rounded design but when you enable any of these toggle, it changes the shape instantly. Then if I click on the edit icon, we now get this all new layout where you can actually change the shape of these tiles individually to fit in more shortcuts for quicker access. So you can completely change and customize the control center as per the requirement. Look wise, I would definitely pick the One UI control center. I think it looks a lot cleaner, more elegant and a bit modern compared to Pixel UI. Now talking about animations, well Samsung definitely feels a bit smoother compared to Pixel UI. As you can see when I open and close applications, since we do not have parallel animations on Android 16, it feels slightly jittery compared to One UI 8. But apart from that, Pixel UI probably has the most interactive animations on any smartphone right now. I mean if you look at some animations, it feels like you are interacting with it. In addition to this, you also get some really good haptics that make the whole experience a lot more fun. Now coming back to One UI 8, no doubt the animations are getting better and better with each software update and honestly with One UI 7 or One UI 8, the experience is really really smooth without any lag or jitter. You are going to get a very polished experience when using a Samsung phone with One UI. The best part is there is a good lock application which you can install anytime on your Galaxy phone and take your customization to a whole new level. You can even tweak the animations using good lock, customize the quick settings panel, change the recent apps layout and tweak each and every element throughout the UI. Overall, I think Samsung's One UI is feature packed and has ton of customizations. It even offers a lot of useful AI features too. Whereas the Android 16 definitely brings in a lot of changes and Google has tried to step up their game with Material 3 Expressive. They now miss out on providing the clean experience which we expect from Pixel UI. I would definitely go with One UI over the Android 16 because not only does it have a lot of customization and features but it also feels slightly more organized and provides you with a very clean and polished experience. Do let me know in the comment section which UI do you prefer and if you guys like this video then be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I am Mr. Android and I'll see you guys in the next one.